Okay guys, still Tuesday, still at the Hack and Pack Shop, or back to the Hack and Pack Shop. I am uh, uploading part four, our trip to the junkyard to find a lower hinge for our Project Grand Marquis. Here's the lower hinge for the rear door. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. And one thing I made an investment in a while back is this manual pump four-wheeler lift. You put dirt bikes on it, whatever. Okay, and this thing is awesome for freaking doing doors. Seeing since most of the work here I do by myself, this is a very, very handy tool to have. Basically, what I do is pump it up enough to put the door underneath it, kind of just like that. Okay, we'll get the door nice and tight. You see me pumping it here. Just take a little bit of the pressure off. Get the thing open as far as we can go here. There we go. It's a little bit of pressure. Not a lot. Nice and easy. So what we're going to need, we're going to need our 13 mil. We're going to need our ratcheting wrench. Okay, I could have uh, got to these with the door shut also, but I figure we'll just do it all with the doors open. Get up in here. Just like the junkyard. We're going to pop the floor hinge. Not a hard job once everything's apart. We'll go find our uh, ratcheting 13 millimeter wrench. We'll get the sucker off a little. Now in the earlier video I showed you guys that I just had one bolt in this lower hinge. Now sometimes you can sneak these out of here, sometimes you got to pull the door away a little bit. It looks like we're going to have to pull the door away just a touch. Just kind of sticking my foot under here. Just kind of walking the door away. The best I can. I might have to loosen that top hinge up just a little bit. Or I'll have to put the camera down so I can use both hands. I'm trying to do this with my foot. There we go. Almost. And she's out. I'll stick the new one in. I'm trying to do this stuff one handed is just a royal pain in the ass. I made sure I grabbed the nuts and bolts off the other doors and hinges and whatnot, just because they are kind of nice and handy to have around the shop. And I'm trying to push out with my foot. There we go. Throw our two nuts on. Most of us have two nuts anyway. underneath the door. There we go. Now a lot of times when you're doing a door hinge you could see exactly where it was on the vehicle. You can see where paint's chipped or broken or maybe there isn't any paint at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do the vehicle side first. You can also tell looking in there where the paint was on these bolts. So I'm going to try to get it back exactly where it was one-handed. Uh, looks like it was about right there. Not all vehicles are this easy to do hinges on, believe me. Stick one of our bolts back in here. I have to pull the door close. I'm just going to stick the lower one in for right now. And then we're going to see how this door actually shuts, if it made a difference or not. 
it is very common, like I said before, for a door hinge to get damaged in, a, in an accident like this. And I'm actually just kind of pushing the door out, pushing it with my knee, holding the camera with one hand, tightening with the other. So we're going to see where that got us. To make sure this wiring is kind of getting it out of the way. Let the pressure off the door. We'll just see where we're at here. And it doesn't look like it really made that much of an improvement. The door does need to be aligned up a little bit better. Down here, really no change. So what we're going to do, just to make sure, pump this back up. I'm going to double make sure that this door is out all the way. Left the little panel on it here. Whacking it with my leg. And that's as far out that door is going to go. What I'm going to do, I'm going to try pulling the top end just a touch. There we go, just moved a little bit. See if that makes any kind of a difference. This is basically what you got to go through until you get it right. Still, really no change. That means we're probably going to have to pull on this post a little bit more. <clears throat> yeah, I bet you that post has got to come out of roughly about an eighth of an inch which is what that door gap should be. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, um, well, not sure yet. Probably do what I've been doing. <clears throat> Got no real way to pull this. Okay, unfortunately, don't have a free machine or anything like that here. Uh, stud welder, one of you guys questioned stud welder. Stud welder really isn't going to pull that. It's pretty stout stuff. It's just going to rip the studs, okay? Um, so I'm just going to have to figure out how to get this out. I could put the old hinge on it and do like caveman style and back it outside and get a come along, come along it say to the back of my truck, get a lot of pressure pulling outwards on it and then beat on this with the uh, blocks and sledgehammer like I was. So that might end up being what we have to do, but I'm going to try to avoid that if possible. So we're going to call that uh, end of part five, door hinge didn't fix anything. So video six, we'll be figuring out what we got to do to get these doors where they belong. Now the reason why these gaps are so tight, when you take and push in on an area like this, what's happening, it's actually shrinking everything. It's shrinking the gap from one side to the other, okay? The car is actually shorter from that door line to that door line because it's pushed in here. So we need to pull it out so it actually makes that door gap wider. That's pretty much all that's holding us up from doing our final bodywork and paint. So this will be the end of, what, five? We'll continue on six pretty soon. Later.